In this lesson, we'll get started with our first Babylon.js project. The first step is to head on to the Babylon.js GitHub repository page, where you can download all of the source code using download zip, or if you're familiar with Git, you can also clone the repository onto your computer. Among the folders that you will, that you will get, there is a one called dist. Inside of that one, you'll find the debug file. This is the one that we'll use during development. This file is human readable, it has comments, so that it's easy to trace errors or just understand how the frame, framework works, if you want to take a look. Once, once you go into production, you will use the non-debug version, the minified version. And some code editors also support what's called a TypeScript definition file, .t, .d, .ts. So, for example, Visual Studio or Sublime Text or Atom with certain plugins, you can use these files. And what they, what this file can do for you is help you with code completion when you are coding in your code editor, so that it gives you hints on the parameters of the different methods and things like that. There's also another folder called exporters, which contains different scripts to export files from different 3D programs or even from Unity. Later in the course, we'll take a look at how to export from Blender. So in this folder, you'll find all the scripts that you need for that. So you've downloaded the library and now we'll take a look at the file structure of the project. We have a index.html file and then a folder called JS where I put the debug file, which is what we'll use during development, the production minified version of the library, and also the TypeScript definition file. So that's all we have. Now let's take a look at the code. In this course, I'll be using Visual Studio Code, which is a free version of Visual Studio. And it's cross-platform because it's based on the Atom shell. So I'm running it on Linux feel free to use whichever code editor works the best for you. This basic index file includes our debug file for the library and also some basic styling, which sets uh, so that, that we don't get like scroll bars like this or things like that. There's no margin, no padding, and it occupies all of the space. Now, Babylon JS projects and WebGL projects really need a canvas element. So that's where all the magic takes place. We need to create our first canvas here. So I'm going to give this canvas an ID of render canvas and, and I'm going to close it. We are also going to enter some style for this canvas so that the canvas uses the full screen and also, uh, once you touch it, it doesn't zoom in or it doesn't pan. So we will set the width to 100% and the height also for 100%. And we're going to set this new CSS property called touch action to none, which means that there's not going to be zooming or pinching or panning on the canvas. Now we need to initiate our, our code. So I'm going to add a script here, which will include an external file, which is where all the, all our project, all the logic of our project will go. So this file I have yet to create will go inside of the JS folder and it will be called app.js inside of JS, then I'm going to create a new file called app.js. And inside of that file, I'm going to include the TypeScript, the TypeScript definition file so that we get this nice auto completion. So for us to do that, you write three um, slashes and then reference path equals um, Babylon, this one here. So this is because we're in the same folder. 
and we close this. So that's all you have to do in Visual Studio to include this. We will create a unique names, namespace for our application, which will be Babylon JS app. So if that is already defined in some other file that we might have included, then we will use that object. But if that hasn't been defined yet, we will use an empty object. So in this case, in this way, all of the code will not pollute the global scope of our, of our application. So our init function then getting the canvas that we've created on our index page. So we need to get the canvas var canvas equals document dot get element by ID. And this is called render canvas. Then we need to create a Babylon JS engine object var engine new Babylon dot engine and I have to pass in the canvas and I want anti-allies which means that it softens a bit some of the rough edges of the figures that we'll be, we will be creating so I give this true and then we can create a scene and that's as far as we're going to go in this lesson so create scene var scene equals new Babylon dot scene and we need to pass in the engine object. So now we just need to call this init function inside of our somewhere here, but we can only do that once once the document object model, the DOM, is fully loaded. So we need to listen for that. I'm gonna create another script tag and Inside of here, I'm gonna listen for an event, add event listener. The event that I'm gonna listen to is called DOM content loaded. This event is triggered every and in any website when all of the DOM is actually loaded into the browser. So that we know that the canvas will be there for us to use. That's basically why we need to do this. And what will happen here is babylon.js app dot init. Let's take a look on our web browser. To run to run babylon.js applications, you need a web server. So in my case, I have Apache installed, which I use for many other projects. So I'm going to use that. I'm going to open the console and I'm going to go to this particular project. So all what we needed at, up to this point was to have the engine launched, which we do. So now we can actually start developing this application. 